Uh, up until probably 10 minutes ago, I didn't realise I was going to be giving this presentation, so this is a little bit off the cuff. Um, I've got a couple of slides that I prepared earlier, um, but they weren't for this particular session, and it's not really the content that I was sort of thinking about getting on the cover, but I, I think it's good. Um, it'll provide some good background. Um, it'll also provide some good insight into what um, we could be potentially doing. So, the topic uh, of my um, rant um, is going to be 3D printing in automotive use. Uh, and the reason I'm talking about this is uh, I have a 50 year old classic car um, that I have been restoring. Um, it's up and running now, um, as of two weeks ago. Um, and what I found um, through the journey of restoring that car is that um, quite often you can't get the parts. Um, or if the parts are available, um, they are ridiculously expensive, they have to come from the US, the lead time is very really quite long. Um, and so what I've done is I've resorted to um, designing um, and 3D printing some of the replacement parts. Um, so what I'll, what I'll, um, I'll talk about is, you know, why am I here? I'm not a 3D printing expert. Um, I've got, um, you know, I do have an engineering background, I also have an IT background. Um, you can take the person out of engineering, you can't take the engineering out of the person. So I still do have a passion um, for this sort of stuff. Um, I've been involved with 3D printing for um, probably about six, seven years now. Um, I'm on my second 3D printer. Um, it's a reasonably high-end printer, I can print a lot of different materials. Um, and uh, I like designing stuff and I like making stuff. Um, so that's why I'm here. Um, what I'll do briefly is just quickly touch on a couple of different types of 3D printing. Can I just have a show of hands? Who's done any 3D printing uh, in the room here? Okay, so we've got pretty good coverage. Okay. Uh, so I won't spend too much time uh, on different types of printing. Talk a little bit about the design software that I use, it's out there. Um, I'll share some examples. Um, and unfortunately, because I didn't think I was going to be presenting tonight, I didn't bring along as many of these examples as I thought. I would have got one example to show you um, a little bit later on, and I'll open up for uh, questions. Um, so, what's 3D printing? I mean, well, basically, it's out of manufacturing. Um, it's, it's basically where you progressively add uh, material you know, in layers to build up the 3D model. Um, the designs are generally created in um, 3D CAD software. Um, and there's a, there's a large number of those available. Um, and there's lots of different um, types of 3D printing. Uh, and the amount of R&D that's going into 3D printing is phenomenal uh, these days. So there's constantly new techniques, new processes, um, new materials uh, being developed. Um, but what are some of the common printing ones? Um, the most common one around is FFF or FDM, fused filament um, fabrication, um, which is, as we know, in the Fab Lab, you know, um, Fab 9 here, we have 3D printers, a lot of universities have them, all universities have them, a lot of libraries have them now as well. Um, and what that does is it, um, it basically melts filament, um, you know, 1.85 or 3 millimeter filament, it looks a little bit like with a snip of wire, and then progressively builds up a model a layer at a time. Um, the layer height can vary from down to 0.5 millimeters, all the way up to um, Lots of different types of materials available, um, to print, PLA, ABS, ASA, um, PETG, nylon, um, flexible filaments, you can get carbon fiber filaments, you can get filaments with metal, Elements in them, you can get filaments with wood in them. There's a whole, along the dark filaments, there's a whole range of different types of filaments. Each one of those filament materials have different thermal properties, different physical properties, um, and so they're suited to different applications. Um, this is the printer that I have. Um, oops, no. Not the printer that I have. Okay, hang on. What about business? Um, yeah, this is the um, the printer that I own. It's a uh, you know reasonably um, high end printer. It's got two uh, independent nozzles, so it can actually print two different materials. Um, we 
which is really handy for you can print support material in one, you can print um, you know, different types of materials. So you, can, you can potentially print hard material with a flexible filament and create hinges uh, all in one print. Um, the minimum wire height is 0.1 millimeter, so it's quite, a, it's quite an accurate printer. Um, and look, I mainly prototype in PLA, which is probably the most common filament that's out there. Um, but uh, for final stuff, I tend to use a material called PETG, which has good um, physical properties uh, and also thermal resistance as well. But I've also printed in nylon, which is a very robust material, um, as well as TPA, which is like a rubber like material. Um, given that there's a large audience, Basically, generally one for the rolls, about 22 dollars a kilo, goes up from the you pay enormous prices depending on the quality, depending on the specific thermal properties as well. Um, once once models are printed, they can be post-processed, so you can sand them, you can make them, um, you can paint them, um, cut them, glue them, Another common um, printing uh, method is uh, SLA or DLP, um, which you basically they take a resin um, and then they use a light mechanism and a laser or a projector to, to set that resin and they build it up actually the opposite way that the, the model actually builds up inside um, sort of out of the resin. Um, look, it gives you really, really high accuracy prints. The, the prints are very, very fragile. Um, they don't have great um, long-term properties. They tend to react to light over time as well. So they, they're great for prototypes. They're great for things like you know jewelry where you might do less less casting or less proper casting. Um, but generally, for you know what we're talking about in terms of the specific need, like automotive restoration, not a great not a great technology. For it's also very messy in the cleanup process uh, as well. Um, but you can get some really, really cool, neat little models out of really, really high accuracy. You know, send me all my stuff for coming out of this space for gamers and you know, sorts of things, but I'm not so for now. Um, the other technology that's really, really interesting and evolving quite rapidly is some sort of selective laser sintering technique or jet binding technique where they you take a material um, that may be of metal um, or it can be all that other stuff and they actually use lasers or light to set um, to set the material. So what you're actually doing is you're actually printing a metal. Um, it's, it's a scented material, quite often they'll post-process it and um, fill it with brass or fill it with other materials, but you can actually create a model in the metal. Um, so this is um, a really interesting area, um, and there's lots of variations in this, but it, it's definitely going to make a difference. Um, companies are doing this already, aerospace, you know, Boeing, um, um, and, and other, other ones are actually producing physical, you know, good for use parts, and using these different types of technologies. Um, yeah, so they basically, they take like a powder form and use a laser to set that in, once again, Lay the material across, it's lazy, you want to lay the material across, it's lazy, it's a, it's a slow process. But um, we're going to have fun next door, aren't we? Um, so that's, that's a couple of the techniques that are out there. In terms of the design software, there's lots of stuff out there. Um, AutoCAD, Rhino, you know, even Blender for designing for people. I tend to use it as whatever's Fusion, a couple of reasons. Fusion 360, a couple of reasons. It's free at the moment for non-commercial use, which is great um, for me. Um, and it is, um, I think, really, really easy software to learn. Um, but also it gives the ability to output the designs um, ready for printing with a 3D printer, ready to cut out on the CNC machine, or ready to you know, do it on a laser machine. So there's a lot of Flexible. I'm sure other packages do as well, but I find it very, very flexible in terms of being able to manufacture in parts using one or more of those components. 
Um, so, how have I used it? A couple of um, um, examples I'll talk about. This is just a little bit more about the fusion stuff. Um, one thing I will talk about if I've used it for well, most of this software is.
If it is, um, there are options to get a much better finish. I'll show you something shortly. They're great for quick prototypes, um, and as I mentioned before, they're great for the undertaking as well. It's not just doesn't exist out there. Um, but also, um, you know, this is something I saw just online. So rather than using a 3D printer to produce the final part, what they did is they printed a, a mold just out of simple plastics that they then used to press the metal to create the shape of the So I thought that was a really novel way of still using 3D printing, um, and, but producing a part using traditional fabrication techniques. Um, you know, 3D printing brackets, uh, you know, surrounds, this isn't my car by the way. Um, you know, that's quite common as well. Um, but also there's an increasingly commercial uh, print services available as well. This is uh, Shapeway. Shapeway is probably one of the largest providers of 3D printing parts. They offer um, the ability to print materials in plastics, you can print in uh, aluminum, you can print in um, uh, a, 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 um, a fused uh, brass or stainless steel or steel. So they're, they're also they're offering increasingly more options for producing this final part. So you could do the design work, upload your model to Shapeway, you get a price there and then how much it would cost to print. And then you could have that part in you know, a week or so. So a quick turnaround time as well. A bit more expensive than doing at home, but you know, we don't um, have the sort of half million dollar million dollar machines that they have for um, the mail facilities. Um, anyhow, these are some of the designs uh, up there. This, you know, it's a great resource. There's resources online. You know, Thingiverse for models. There's also Facebook groups that specialise in people doing restoration for different types of vehicles. Um, so there's a lot of resources out there um, that we can leverage. Um, this is another example where um, somebody's actually done the prototyping in plastic to make sure that the part will fit and get all of that sorted out. And then, once you've got the final design sorted, send it off to a CNC and have it milled out of aluminium and milled out of steel and you know, to do so. There's some good options um, around that. Um, actually, before we get on to questions, so this is not my car. So just so you know, this is the, it's not my exact car, I don't have a photo of it, but uh, this is the sort of car that I have been exploring. It's about 50 years old, um, and um, yeah, good fun. And yeah, questions? Well, actually, before we go, um, so. So this is a, um, this is a printed car. Um, so this was Defender Mills um, on the car. Um, to buy those reproduction ones of those, they cost about $1,000 a US, um, which I couldn't really justify, um, but I wanted a pair for my car. So um, this, the, the, the stuff in grey here um, has been modelled up with Fusion 360, um, printed out um, using uh, PTG plastic. So it will hold up to outside life, and hold up to the heat um, and temperatures. Um, that you get out there. It's been coated in um, just a primer filler with the status and then sand and light and it'll go with sand and it will black. And you wouldn't, um, you know, you wouldn't know the difference uh, from the normal production car. But, you know, there's a fair bit of design involved with that. Um, it's actually two separate parts at this stage that will glue together. Um, and it'll have some internal structure that will hold it down to the, um, to the, uh, to the fenders. So, yeah, working hard in the cost of the manfield. Constant uh, cost. In terms of print material, there's probably you know, a couple of bucks worth of material uh, in there. In terms of design time, <laughs> there's probably through the you know, probably you know, half a dozen to a dozen prototypes uh, trying to get the get the design right. I actually had an original one, so I had the measurements and dimensions, so a lot of time going back and forth between the model, the original model and the final final fabrication. But there's you know there's probably a couple of weeks, so probably let's say 50 hours worth of design work in there. Um, so commercially um, um, you know the, 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 if it was a multi-million dollar car, 
and then they are worth it. You know? So for instance, um, it does make sense. So uh, in the US, they're restoring, I think it's the BMW convertible that um, Elvis used to own. Um, it was being restored at the moment. They couldn't get the door handles. So they've modeled that up, 3D printed door handles. And that way. So there is commercial. We are seeing more and more commercial need for this sort of stuff. Exhaust manifolds or inlet manifolds in cars, with this metal, metal type technology. You know, people are producing, replicating parts and producing modes and being able to, There is a commercial proposition. And I think we'll see more of this over time as, and not only the automotive industry, other areas as well, as parts become harder to produce, harder to maintain the stock levels, you know, if you can produce it on time, as a need in the market. Yeah, look, there are um, a number of um, model libraries out there. Um, probably the biggest and the, the most well-known, but it's not specific to the automotive industry, is a little or something, thing of this. Um, and you can download um, all sorts of models. Um, there's licensing on those as well, so there are like, some that are you pay for. Um, there's a number of other websites that actually offer exactly what you're talking about, the ability to download a model and you pay a you know, five dollar, ten dollar, fifty dollar, depending on the model, and fee for to use that model. Um, I'm not aware of anything that's specific for the automotive industry at this stage. Um, what I think we will see, we may see, is some of the other manufacturers actually releasing their models online. Um, one of the appliance manufacturers, I think it's Westinghouse, uh, or one of the have actually re released their, uh, their, their, some of the models for their old fridges or ovens or stuff like that. So rather than them actually maintaining them in stock, what they're basically saying is if you need it, there's the model, find yourself a printing service and have it produced. So I, I do think this I do think there's commercial opportunities there, um, for, you know, particularly for the higher end of vehicles and particularly for sort of you know, manufacturers that don't have to continue to support these products or anything like that. Yeah. Um, how long How long before the car? It's ready. <laughs> um, I actually um, had it uh, inspected about two weeks ago um, and got my club registration uh, about a week, a week or two ago um, as well. So yeah, it's up and running, it's driving around. There's always a shopping list of things to continue to fix on all the cars. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's working quite nicely. Yeah, you mentioned that you Um, look, there is, if we're looking at it from an environmental impact, um, size of the angle, I think, so um, it's interesting, uh, PLA um, is actually a cornstarch product, um, so it is actually ultimately biodegradable. Um, some of the other plastics, nylon, obviously not biodegradable, but there are, um, there are, depending on the physical properties of what they, they want, there are, um, there are some environmental options that you can use. But it's interesting, if you look at sort of what's the impact um, of printing one part out of a piece of plastic versus the entire manufacturing and remanufacturing production process, yeah, well, yeah, granted there is an environmental impact, but it's probably a lot less than you when know, you think about the entire building injection models. You know, fabricating all that plastic, maintaining the stock, or the transport, everything else, versus printing a part. Um, I'm not losing any sleep over you know, printing a part for a minute. Um,